time to Sisters and brothers in Christ, this week's sermon is called A Little is Enough to Change Everything. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I am a pastor because I deeply, fully, passionately believe that the God dimension of life, the spiritual dimension of life, is by far the most important thing in this human life. And that is why I'm a pastor. Now, unfortunately, most people live their lives um, kind of unconnected to that or not aware of that. But for those of us who find that dimension of life and who open ourselves to living in that God dimension of life, that spiritual dimension of life, it changes absolutely everything. Jesus called this dimension of life the kingdom of God or the reign, R-E-I-G-N, the reign of God. And he says, this is the kingdom of God, that you know the Father and the one whom the Father sent, Jesus Christ. So to know God, to live our lives in relationship with God and in relationship with Jesus Christ is to, is to live in the kingdom of God, to live in the reign of God, to to have that God dimension to life, that spiritual dimension of life. And to me as a pastor, as I said, that is what life is all about. And so when people come to me and they say, um, Pastor, I've had sort of a, an awakening or a, a conversion experience, an epiphany, whatever you, we want to call that, it's called by many and various names, when they have their aha moment and they get that, that the most important dimension in life is this spiritual dimension, this reign of God, that's what I live for as a pastor. That's what excites me more than anything else. 
And I can recall certain individuals um, having these epiphanies, these awakenings, these moments, and sharing them with me. And I need to mention that sometimes it's a person who already was a person of faith. I think of a woman around my age here at the church who many years ago, she came to church faithfully every week. Um, she prayed, you know, she was involved in different things. And one day she just called me and she said, I need to tell you something. And we, we met for lunch right down the street here at the, um, at the grill on Main Street. And this woman told me about her, that something I had said in my sermon a couple weeks earlier where I was quoting Jesus and, and what he said about the kingdom of God, the reign of God, and she had this moment, this aha moment, this epiphany, this awakening, and it changed everything, every dimension of her life. And she wanted to share that with me, and she wanted to know how she could continue living her life in that reign of God, in that spiritual dimension, and what you know, practices she could do to continue that. So that is what um, Jesus is talking about in today's parables. And we are continuing along in the Gospel of Matthew, and we're on the 13th chapter. And the first parable was about the sower and the seed, and last week's parable was about the wheat and the weeds. And this week's parables are all short little one-liners. There's several of them together, and they're all about what this kingdom of God, what this reign of God, what this spiritual or God dimension of life is like. So I'm going to read them to you from Matthew 13, starting with verse 31. Jesus says, gives them another parable. He says, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. So one year for my kids' sermon, I gave all the kids these tiny little mustard seeds and got them to realize that from this tiny little seed, one of the smallest of all seeds, Jesus said, comes this huge tree that the birds come and nest in. So something so small, that initial aha moment, that hearing the word of God in a new way, having that epiphany, having that realization, that awakening, it can come in, in through something so small, but it affects everything. It's huge. It grows into like this big tree that the birds come and nest in its branches. A similar parable, Jesus goes on. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour, until it was all leavened. Again, yeast, very, very tiny, small thing, but when mixed in with three measures, a large quantity of flour, it affects the entire mass. And that's how when we say yes to God, when we have our epiphany, when we begin to see that the most important dimension of life is the reign of God, is the God dimension of life, it, that realization, that awareness enters into every aspect of our lives and changes absolutely everything. Jesus continues, and now I'm on verse 44. He says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. And then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he had and buys that field. When people come to me and they've had their spiritual awakening, there's this uh, excitement there on 
fire. They, they realize that this reign of God, this, this spiritual or God dimension of life is by far the most important thing in their lives. And there's this incredible passion and excitement to live in it more deeply, more fully. It's like a, that treasure hidden in a field that they're so excited to have found. Jesus continues, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. So when we find this kingdom of God, it's like that mustard seed or that yeast. It's very small. It comes to us maybe in some simple, small way, but affects absolutely everything, has this huge effect on us. But it's also something that brings us joy and that we treasure, like the man finding the treasure in the field, or like the the pearl uh, of great, great value. We realize it's the most important, the most valuable thing in life. Jesus continues, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good fish into baskets and threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh, the kingdom, the reign of God, the spiritual dimension of God is abundant. When we discover it, when we live in it, our lives are abundant like that net full of fish. And I would also say that we begin to eliminate those things that are not of God, those things that are, that are bad, that are not of God in our lives, like those bad fish, those are thrown into the fire, they're thrown away, and we're, we're more and more purified and cleansed and let go of those things that are not of God as we live our lives more fully in God. And finally, the last parable for this week is from Matthew 13, 51. Have you understood all this? And Jesus' disciples say, yes. And Jesus says, therefore, every scribe who's been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. So um, those of us who found this become like this, like a, the owner of a household who are so excited to share what we have to show people this treasure, both old and new, and hope and pray that, that they have their epiphany, that they say yes to living their lives in this spiritual dimension, and that it comes to change everything in their lives. So our first two lessons um, show us that this reign of God that Jesus speaks of, this God dimension of life, affects every aspect of our lives. And I'm going to look at our first two lessons in terms of the difficult times of our lives. It affects that completely, those experiences. But also the, the joyful and the, and the wonderful and the, the new blessings of our lives. So it affects us in the difficult, challenging times and in the wonderful times. And um, these first two lessons for today are lessons that when I read both of them, I was deeply moved because both of these lessons spoke to me personally years ago at very important junctures in my life. So the first one we're going to look at addresses those difficult, challenging times of our lives. And it's from Romans 8, verses 26 through 39. 
And the part I want to focus on is Paul is writing about the Holy Spirit. And he says, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not even know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes for us with groans too deep for words. And that's from Romans 8, verse 26. And I wanted to share, when I was a young woman, I was a college student. I think I was a junior in college. And that summer, after my junior year, I took a summer course at Harvard Divinity School. So I moved to Cambridge, Massachusetts, and I took theological German. It was a year of German crammed into 10 weeks in the summer. It was really a grueling academic schedule. We were in class all day and all night learning German. And I was alone in a strange environment. I was very young. I was like 20 years old. I struggled as a young woman. I struggled a lot with depression. And that summer, I was deeply depressed. Uh, and so one night in my room, I can still remember that room I had at Divinity Hall at Harvard Divinity School. On, um, that was the original building there at Harvard Divinity School. And I was deeply, deeply depressed. And I was writing in my journal. And I was so depressed that I even felt far away from God. And I prayed, and I remember weeping in my deep depression and saying, God, I, I, I can't even pray. I'm so low. I'm so down. I'm so depressed. And I knew from reading many of the works of my own um, Martin Luther that Luther said that his deepest sin, his greatest sin, was despair. And as I sat in my room at Harvard Divinity School, I felt that despair, and I journaled. And I opened my Bible, and this is the verse from Romans 8, verse 26. That's the verse that I opened to. For... The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we are not even able to pray as we ought, but the Spirit herself intercedes for us with groans too deep for words. And as I wrote this, you know, stuff in my, from my depression, from my despair in my journal, I realized that my groaning, my wailing, my crying out to God in my journal was, in fact, prayer. It was the Holy Spirit within me, praying for me, interceding for me. Because sisters and brothers, no matter how down you are, no matter how deep your despair, no matter how far away from God you feel, this word from Romans 8 26 assures us that no matter there's no place we can go where we can escape the presence of that spirit of God that lives within us and strengthens us in our weakness even with groans too deep for words thanks be to God so you see this spiritual dimension of life when we have just that little bit even just that little bit of faith like a mustard seed it affects everything, even our most challenging times of our lives. But now uh, we'll end with um, the, the more joyful and blessed times of our lives. And that's today's first reading from 1 Kings, the third chapter, verses 5 through 12. And this is also a passage that I have a personal deep experience of. Um, I, on August 1st, will celebrate 24 years of ministry here at First Lutheran Church. I began here August 1st, 1996, as your pastor. 
And when I first came to this church, I prayed about my leadership here and my ministry that I would do the best possible job and be the best possible pastor I could be, um, the best steward of this incredible community of faith that God had entrusted to my, into my hands as pastor. And I prayed for God to lead me to a Bible passage that could be my passage, my verse that would strengthen me and support me in my ministry. And the one that was given to me is this passage from 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 to 12. It's the story of King Solomon, who inherits the throne of his father, King David, who was the greatest king of Israel. And so King Solomon's praying to God, and God says, Solomon, ask of whatever you want from me. Um, you are the new king, ask for whatever you wish. And Solomon says, Lord, I feel so unworthy of this calling and of this, this great gift of this people of Israel, this great nation that you've entrusted into my care as king. And, you know, you, you blessed my father, David, and I, I just, I pray that you would grant me a wise and discerning mind to be the best possible leader for these people that you've entrusted to my care. And that was an epiphany for me because that became my prayer here in this place of First Lutheran Church, that God would grant me a wise and discerning mind like Solomon to be the best possible leader for the people of faith that God has entrusted into my care. And I feel um, that God has led us through many challenging and beautiful times together and will continue to do so. So sisters and brothers, my prayer for you this day is that you will have an epiphany, an awakening through today's word and that like that little tiny mustard seed, it might be something very small, but sisters and brothers, that is all you need. A little of the reign of God, a little of the God dimension in your life changes absolutely everything. And that it will change the way you face the difficult times of your life and also the joyful blessing times of your life that it will be like that mustard seed or that yeast that affects absolutely everything, and that it will be like that treasure or that fine, finest pearl of all that will be the greatest treasure of your heart and your life. Amen. And now may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May God look upon us with blessing and grant us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I, the Lord, of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save, I who made the stars of night, I will make the darkness bright, who will bear my light to them? shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you I will hold your people in my heart. 
by the Lord is snow and rain. I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. Why turn away? I will break their hearts of stone. Give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard. If you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. Finest bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have. If you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. I will hold your people in my heart. This world can be cold and bitter Feels like we're in the dead of winter Waiting on something better But am I really gonna hide forever? Over and over again I hear your voice in my head Let your light shine, let your light shine For all to see, start a fire in my soul Start a fire in me. You only need a spark to start a whole blaze. It only takes a little faith. Let it start right here in this city. So these old walls will never be the same. Over and over again, I hear your voice in my head. They need to know, I need to go. Spirit, won't you fall on my heart? Start a fire in my soul and the flame will make it grow. So there's no doubt or denying. Let it burn so brightly that everyone around can see that it's you, that it's you that we need. Start a fire in me. You are the fire, you are the flame, you are the life in the darkest day. You count the hope we bear. Your
let it be so brightly that everyone around can see that it's you, that it's you that we need. Start a fire in me.